Hello, good to be with you again, and let's look to the Word of God. I want to talk today about the understanding of prayer, the understanding of prayer. In fact, for the next couple of weeks, I'd like to kind of just took a look at, at, at prayer uh, as a subject, and uh, we're looking at things like uh, uh, what is prayer, to whom do we pray, why do we pray, and how do we pray. I'd like to kind of look at those things and, and, and just kind of pick them apart a little bit and see if we can learn something about how to more efficiently pray. Um, people say, you know, is it, is, it, is it the right thing to say, efficiently pray? Yeah, I think so. I think sometimes we waste a lot of time talking to God about things that He's already taking care of anyway. Um, you know, for instance, sometimes we always, we say this, and I'm, I'm not condemning anybody for saying this, but, you know, we, we say it again and again, Lord, please be with us. And yet he's already promised, I'll never leave you or forsake you. So he's there, but we're always asking him to be with us. And uh, the Lord says, aren't they aware of the fact I'm here? You know, but uh, I, I think that sometimes we, we need to look at, you know, certain subjects and pull them apart a little bit and see if we can more efficiently use our time and words and thoughts of how we, how we pray and how we talk to God. So that's what we'll talk about. Uh, you know, what is prayer? To whom should we pray? And uh, why do we pray? And how do we pray? Uh, I want to I want to quote a quote here um, by uh, O. Palmer Robinson, uh, editor and uh, revisionist of uh, the book A Way to Pray, which was actually first published uh, 300 years ago uh, by Matthew Henry. Yeah, that's right, Matthew Henry's commentary. He also wrote this book called A Way to Pray. In fact, I think it was called um, A Method to Pray or something like that. It was something a little bit different then, but they changed it and it's called A Way to Pray. Excellent book. It says this, Prayer is nothing more and nothing less than what the old Puritans called pleading the promises. Or, and this is not part of the quote, this is me, us old-time Pentecostals, we would say, you've got to pray through. We've got to pray through. And I would hear people say that uh, when I was a boy in the Pentecostal church that I attended back in Wales. And I would hear the old-timers talking about certain issues that, uh, you know, people had, had asked them to pray about. And they, were, they would decide that there were some some things that were asked to pray for. You, you you just didn't pray, you had to pray through. And it wasn't until many years later what I meant was that they they were praying through uh, the Word of God. They were praying through what God had already said in His Word. Therefore, you know, you're anticipating that God is going to answer this because God has already said it. We refer to it sometimes as praying the Word, praying the Word. And uh, uh, so so we 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 pray through or, or we pray the promises that God has made. Uh, this is the simplest explanation that I can, I can give you on what I'm talking about right now. God has made promises to his people and that's a fact. You know that as well as I do. You only have to pick up the word of God and, and read for a short period of time before you will see that God has promised again and again and again various things uh, to, to bless us, anoint us, and, and keep us, and, uh, and uh, oh, so many wonderful, wonderful blessings. And God has promised these things, and they are in the Word of God for you and I to look at, pray about, and accept and receive them. So it's a fact. God has made many, many promises to His people. Now then, His people respond by uh, redirecting, as it were, those promises to the Lord in the form of prayer. And that is what this is all about. This is what the old time Puritans and the old time Pentecostals were talking about, is praying the promises of God, praying through that which God has already stated in his word. He has already promised that he would never leave you off, you forsake you. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And so God has made those promises and made those statements and many, many hundreds, maybe thousands of other uh, promises that God has made. And so we know that for a fact, 
And so now when we pray, we pray by, first of all, I have a habit of doing it. I read the Word of God first, and then I pray. You know, I'm talking about in my private devotion now. I'm, I, I like to read the Word of God and, uh, and, and pray. And sometimes I'll, I'll break off from praying and I'll go back and read something else in the Word of God. And I'm amazed sometimes how that God gives me direction in my praying to pray for certain issues or certain things that, um, I'll be honest with you, uh, in the natural, they don't make particularly sense to me. Uh, you know, why would I think to pray about that? Or why would I think of that person right now? But I believe sometimes that God helps us as we look to the Word of God and directs us as to how we ought to pray in regard to certain issues. And uh, uh, it, it, it's been amazing to me down through the years how that uh, again and again it has been verified. Uh, somebody will come to you and tell you that they were going through a particular hard situation and even sometimes life-threatening things. And you suddenly realize that you prayed about that at that particular time. So you realize that the Spirit of God had led you to pray that. And so you know that that's, that's why the answer came. That's why the, the prayer was answered. Not because you prayed it, but because it was in all of it was in accordance with God's plan and purpose. And so it's exciting. And that's why I think that prayer is one of the most exciting subjects that you can study. It's beautiful. The, fact that we can have conversation with God, but not only that it's a one-way street where we talk to God, we allow Him to speak to us by pausing for a moment, reading the Word of God and letting God, you know, germinate a few thoughts in our minds sometimes. And uh, if, if, you're, if you're righteous before God, if you're, if you're living a clean, moral life, I really believe that with boldness, and confidence, you can ask God for what you will. And you know, here, here we go, uh, praying what is according to God's word, praying the promises. Listen, John 16, 23, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Now, you can't cut that any other way. You, you, you look at it and you take it for what it's worth. This is Jesus speaking and he's talking to his disciples and we too are the disciples of Jesus Christ if we accepted him as our Lord and Savior. We are disciples of Christ. So what Christ said to his 12 disciples in the beginning, he is saying to every disciple that has ever put their hand as it were to the plow and said, I'm going to follow Jesus. This is your promise today. Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Now, so we need to come back to God. You see, and with that kind of confidence, you, you may even find yourself uh, reminding God of the promises he's made. Now, I know that uh, we're on ground here that is almost sacred ground, so be careful how we, how we step here, how we walk. I feel like Moses. You know, at the, at the burning bush, and he said, "Moses, take off thy shoes." He said, "For the ground in which you stand is is holy ground." We're approaching something uh, that is 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 that it's it's sacred, it's holy. But I believe there's there's evidence to prove that you can come to a place where you can converse with God and talk with God in this way, and not in in a in a haughty manner or in a better in an attitude that says, you know, I know better than you, God. It's not that. You know, even as Moses did, when uh, God expressed the desire to destroy all the people of Israel. You know about that. That's in Exodus uh, 32. Exodus 32. Uh, it, Mo, God, God had said, you know, he said, Moses, step aside. He says, now let me alone that, that my wrath may be wax hot against uh, them uh, and that I, I may consume them. This is what he said. And uh, he, he went on to say this, and Moses talking to God, look, he says in verse three, he says, uh, remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, 
to whom thou swearest by thine own self. It, God doesn't need to swear by anybody, but by himself. Him, you know, he, he said, I will do this. He says, by thine own self. And said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all th this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. That's Exodus 32, uh, verse 13. Uh, the, you see, so here is what God has said in his word, and M Moses is praying the word. He is, he is telling God, said, listen, step aside and out of the way, and I'll, I'll destroy Israel, and we'll start again. He said to, he said to Moses, I'll, I'll, I'll raise up a generation of people that will serve me and, and love me. Uh, this, these, these, this bunch, they're, they're wicked, they're evil. They, they, they say one thing and they do another. They fall back on their word. They go to uh, idols and, and, and worship other gods and, and so on and so forth. And he said, Moses, step aside and let me j just get at them for a moment. I'll destroy them to a man. And that's what God's desire is. He says so there. Moses uh, pleads the, the case for Israel. And, and then he reminded, he says, listen, this is Abraham, this is, this is Moses rather, talking to God. This is Moses talking to Almighty God. He says, remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants. He's reminding God. And it, I believe that you can come into a fellowship with God where you can have, you can be a friend of God where God will allow you uh, the pleasure and the privilege of being able to speak to him. It is what is on your heart, what is in your mind, how your feelings are at that particular moment. Not that God doesn't know all those things, but God will allow you to speak to him. And here Moses is reminding God that you said that you were going to bless them to such an extent that they'd be like the stars of heaven that they, they, all the land and would be given to them forever, forevermore, and everything else. So he's reminding God. God's saying, I'll destroy them. He says, God, wait a moment. Just let me remind you, this is what you said. Wow. You know, so the thing is this. God has promised, and he will honor that promise. How could a God who is faithful to his word fail to answer prayers of that kind. You see, this is why I've said it so many times, prayer is such a powerful thing. And if we children of God would only realize that what we need to do is pray more about situations. We, we have a tendency to look at a thing and say, oh, I can work this out, I can do that, I'll, I'll go to see this guy, I'll see that, that uh, lawyer, I'll talk to this one, I'll do that and everything else. And what we really need to be doing is saying, you know what, let me find a place where I can be alone with God and talk with God about it. Let me pray about it. Let me ask God uh, as to how we can maneuver through this situation. And I really believe it, that sometimes we use it as a, sometimes we use it either as a last resort or sometimes as an, as an additive. We, it's like ingredients that we're adding into, into something we're making. We say, well, you know, I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll write a letter and I'll go see this guy and I'll, I'll do that and I'll inquire about that and I'll do anything else. And, you know, if you want to pray about it, okay, I'll take some prayers as well. I think that prayer should be the number one issue, the number one thing. How could, you see, how can God, who is faithful to his word, fail to answer prayers of that kind? I believe that if Christians would join together and form their belief, their prayers with the maturity and the insight provided by the scripture itself, the impact on the world could be immeasurable. It could be that we couldn't measure it. We could have an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I am, I'll be honest with you right now, I am believing that we're going to see a great outpouring of God's Holy Spirit before Christ comes back and claims his church. I've always believed that. I can I can prove it uh, from the word of God. 
But by the same time, the Word of God also speaks about a falling away. In other words, there'll be those that maybe they were never saved to begin with. Maybe they never had any deep roots. They're like that seed that falls by the wayside, you know, and then, and it, 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 it springs up, it, it, it finds some nourishment that's there, and, and it springs up. It, it says, but, you know, in the heat of the noonday sun, it withers and it dies. And when people are put to the test, and I believe that maybe the church, the church in general, is going to be put to the test as far as to what we believe, what we preach, and, and so on and so forth. You know, and so people will be put to the test. You may lose your job if you're a born again Christian, or you know, you may not be able to do this or do that because you're a Christian. And you know, if you don't stand up and speak your mind, they'll run right over you. So, what are we going to do in that day? Well, we need to stand firm, we need to stand fast in Christ, and we need to remind God of what God has said in His Word, and God who is faithful. In, his, in what he has said in his word will be faithful in his actions toward us and bless us. And so I want you to meditate and think on these things uh, until next week. We'll, we'll talk for the next couple of weeks, we'll talk about prayer and the various you know, facets. I like to call it facets, the facets of prayer. And uh, the polished surfaces of, of a diamond are called facets. And so, you know, let's, let's look at some of these areas and polish the, the, the facet a little and uh, see if we can get it to live within our hearts. Let me pray for you right now. Father, I pray in Jesus' precious name today that you will cause those that are watching today, those that are listening today, wherever they might be at this particular time, to realize the importance of prayer, the importance of being able to come to you and talk to you about these various problems that we are facing from day to day. And not be afraid, Lord, to remind you of what you have said in your word, the promises that you have made us. And because we know, Lord, that you never go back upon your word, that we're assured that you will answer those prayers, providing, providing that we are in a place to ask you of those things. As I've already said, we have to be upright and honest and living moral lives before God. And we're in a place where we can call upon you and speak of your word and your promises in that way. So bless us today, Lord, I pray. And we'll rejoice as we meet again next Tuesday. God bless you.